we gained access to a group of militant anti-fascists known as Antifa. Are you filming now? They don't usually like cameras around. Some cover their faces, and others want their voices disguised. And the fascists stick their head out of the ground and say, we're going to be here on this day to march in support of our white greatness. That's gross. And that's when people organize, get together, and bash the fash. Hard strikes to the Adam's Apple trachea area. Really good. In dozens of interviews, Fault Lines caught a glimpse behind the mask of Antifa, questioning activists about the controversial tactics they've used to counter hate crimes. White supremacists have found a platform with the election of Donald Trump, but so have their adversaries. Yelling is exhausting. <laughs> Antifa is a fringe movement, but their fight has found center stage in the polarized climate of Trump's America. If anything comes up for you or you're triggered in this environment, we care about your inner safety as well as your <laughs> physical safety. That's how we roll as Antifa, we love people. This is the collective of researchers waging information warfare to expose bigotry. If your neighbor is a neo-Nazi who believes that the race war is imminent and wants to bring it about, we think you have a right to know that. This is the street medic tending to the wounds of violent protests. During a lot of the Antifa actions, we're talking about stabbings, and we're talking about um, blunt force trauma wounds to, to, to the head, to the arms, to the legs. That's caused by police and by fascists. And this is Antifa, from the view of a Trump supporter who can't seem to shake them. There's a bunch of kids who call them anti-fascists, um, and they're acting like fascists themselves. It's kind of sad. Antifa is a loose collection of organizations and ideas with no party line and no formal leadership. In the last year, They've been defined more by their street tactics than anything else. They show up in the helmets and the black masks, and they've got clubs and they've got everything. Antifa! The more uh, the presidency looks like it's a shadow fascist government, the more scared people are going to get. And when people are scared, people act a little bit more erratic. The first year of Trump saw an increase in hate crimes and racist violence. And Antifa has often responded to that threat with violence of their own. This is the street fighter training for battle. With one punch to the face of America's most infamous white supremacist, Antifa went viral. How do you shut that down? A, a swift and beautiful punch to the face by a masked crusader. But has this use of force translated into political power? They watch that, you know, kind of street porn. It plays completely into their hands. It's, it's a very stupid tactic. Nonviolence does attempt to appeal to the moral conscience of the nation. Now the jury's still out if the nation has one. This is Antifa. This is war, it's not playtime. So yeah, punch Nazis, kill them, kill those f***ers dead. It was a year ago when Josh Dukes first saw this video of Richard Spencer getting punched on Inauguration Day. The 35-year-old hacker, who goes by Hex, was across the country, watching from a Seattle hospital bed. That's not probably going to change somebody's mind. I think that, like, it would have been better if it was an egg. <laughs> uh... Earlier that day, he joined a large group of anti-fascists to protest a speech by Trump's supporter and provocateur, Milo Yiannopoulos. Inside the half-full auditorium at the University of Washington, Milo celebrated Trump's election with the college Republicans. News flash the radical left. You will never stop me because you can't stop different opinions with violent intolerance. And we all now know, everybody now knows where the violence is coming from. Outside, Antifa tried to block people from attending the talk. I wanted to be part of the, like, in the group of people who was there opposing that and, and opposing him. And what I ended up doing was, like, jumping in and de-escalating in a few places. A black-clad protester attacked this young Trump supporter and pelted him with paint. 30-year-old Mark Aquana was not able to get into the talk, so he spent the evening scuffling with anti-fascist protesters. When Aquana, seen here in the yellow hat, allegedly began pepper spraying the crowd, Hex stepped in to confront him. The last thing I remember, I think I was like holding with both hands the guy's jacket, yelling in his face, like, give me the pepper spray and I'll let you go. I'm gonna stop you, but like, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just not gonna let you hurt anybody else. And then I remember being shot, um, you know. <sighs> yeah. 
Aquana's wife, Elizabeth, allegedly emerged from behind her husband, pulled a gun from her holster, and fired one shot. This footage was edited by investigators to identify Hex and Aquana. It is now evidence in a criminal trial against the couple. The Aquana's attorney said that Elizabeth acted in self-defense. Where'd the bullet go in? Oh, so it went in right, uh, right here, basically. It's still weird. <laughs> it's, it's, it still doesn't make sense. They saw him! They saw him! They did it! He did it! For members of Antifa, Hex's shooting underscored a belief they had all along. In the Trump era, the threat of violence against them is increasingly real. As we like stretch and stuff, make sure you have enough space to spread your arms in every direction. Uh, I am Joe. Tonight, Hex's friend Joe is leading a martial arts training in the Seattle park. Try to swing your arms this way. The first technique is going to be based in the Wing Chun Kung Fu. Which is These activists are preparing to defend themselves with violence if necessary. And so let's say uh, you're going to get punched by somebody. Here I am, proud boy drinking or traditionalist workers party person trying to call you a comrade while being a clan member. Here I go and I'm going to punch you because you see through that all right, there you go, good. I'm um, part of the campus Republicans. I want to build a build a wall to keep out the immigrants because that is funny to my rich crack. And I'm going to hit you. Oh, my God. There we go. All right. Yeah, thank you. Hex is still recovering from the gunshot wound that almost took his life. A year later, he's taking a break from the street protest. But Joe and his crew went to the Women's March, where thousands of Seattle residents have gathered to oppose the Trump administration. No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. No Trump. One of Antifa's adversaries is also on the scene. Trump supporter Joey Gibson has just arrived. So for me, the most important thing is freedom. That's how simple it is for me. He represents like fascist populism, or just like the idea of like hiding behind traditional American values. Gibson's group is called Patriot Prayer. He's made a point of marching in liberal towns to remind everyone that Trump is president. It was one of the best nights of my life. I was so happy and so excited. And at that point, you know, I thought that like I was gonna be able to sit back and just relax, but uh, things got even crazier after he was elected. The organizers of the rally are trying to say that Trump supporters are fascists. Um, so we're gonna get some people with Trump gear up there and to kind of go into the crowd and talk to people and kind of help them understand that, you know, Trump supporters are human too. You know, they're not Nazis. Are you looking out for Antifa today? Yeah, but we, we've seen them here and there with their masks off. So they're not here in their black block. So that's good. Get excited, man. Get ready to get pepper sprayed. Do you have glasses? Yeah, when we go in there, hell yeah. And it gets sprayed. Feminism is cancer. It's gonna destroy this economy. It's gonna destroy this thing. White supremacy right there, white supremacy, queer phobia, transphobia, misogyny, misogynoir, all in one go. <laughs> Today, Gibson is marching with a group of right-wing Christian street preachers. They wouldn't let us in the indigenous people section. <laughs> what? Not even him? I'm tolerant towards everybody, especially if, if what they're doing is, is using their free speech. Women want to rule the household. They want to run things. They want to be have the right to kill their children if they want to. Uh, they don't want men to have that role of leadership. When are you guys going to start preaching? That gets to walk around with nothing but actual hate that leads to rape and murder, and like his rights are protected. If I go over there and do anything to him, I'm spending the night in the cage. I am here to promote freedom. I am here to free Seattle. We're here to promote love. We're here to promote God. We're here to promote freedom, ladies and gentlemen. You are being you. Learn to be a woman. Hey, hey, Time With Antifa in the wings, Gibson's loudest challenge comes from the women in pink hats. It appears that Joe's tactics today will not include any punching. Instead, he'll try to shout Gibson down. What am I doing? I'm outnumbered right now. I'm not doing. Yo, dude. At times, Joe also tries for dialogue. Reaching out to you and subjecting myself to attacks from these. 
to actually try to speak to you and speak to your heart, speak to your soul. I did the same you did. I surrounded myself with a bunch of white Nazis because I was sick and wanted to belong, and I got better. I hope you get better before some dumb happens to you. And what do you believe in? Freedom. Freedom. But who do you feel like you're defending by being here now? I mean, I, I'm defending my own sense of peace of mind. I don't want to just go and just leave these in what is my city right now. At the very least, if I can be here and scream, that's better than doing nothing. It makes me feel better than doing nothing. So that's what's up. Chris Hedges has written multiple essays criticizing Antifa. He says the fight is not with fringe groups, but with corporate and government forces. We're in serious trouble, but it's not these idiots who are putting us in trouble. We have very dark, sinister, totalitarian forces that are snuffing out the last vestiges of American democracy. And we better revolt, we better respond. And carrying out these kinds of street confrontations plays right into the hands of these centers of power. Natasha Leonard wrote an essay defending the masked activists who punched Richard Spencer. She says you can't ignore the link between Trump's election and the spike of incidents of racist harassment that have followed. I don't think they'd go away if you're ignoring them. They have a president. Since Trump's election, violent conflicts have exploded in college towns like Berkeley, California, raising questions about hate speech and political violence. These are questions that Berkeley's mayor has grappled with all year. It's not surprising when we have a president who openly talks about beating people up and is, is fanning the flames of hatred and, and, and division. And we're seeing those divisions that rift actually happen on the streets of the city of Berkeley. Last August, a broad coalition of activists here marched to oppose hate groups, and they invited Antifa to play a defensive role at the protest. Joey Gibson was also there. Gibson's clear. He wants to bait people on the left, especially Antifa, into acts of violence. Just keep going out there, preach love, preach freedom, and get it on camera, have them assaulting us, and so the people in the world knows who they really are. When Gibson entered a Berkeley Park with his hands up, he got his wish. I mean, they, they took the bait, you know, so I guess I'm thankful for that. As this mob of black-clad activists chased him out, Gibson's broad definition of free speech collided with Antifa's broad definition of self-defense. Dude, I don't, I don't want to do this. The footage from that day is hard for Gibson to watch. I can't. Is that, is that hard to watch? Yeah, I just, the event's organizers refused to apologize for the violence. Why is hard work with that? This medic, a veteran of street protests around the world, agrees. A little bit of violence is okay. It looks as though the mob is trying to push these people out of the zone, and they succeeded in doing that. It didn't look like anyone was going to die. The goal was to make them leave, and that seems to be the result. Like, the deal. <laughs> They're fascists. <laughs> they should leave. Gibson was prevented from spreading his message in Berkeley, and Antifa claimed victory. It was horrendous. It's a horrible thing that happened yesterday. I think the next day Americans he found a platform. Like a lot of the incident won him, him an appearance on Fox News. Don't talk about him and they'll just go away. No, we got to stand up to Antifa. We got to. Antifa's tactics caused concern for these former Berkeley students. They were the violent ones. They really were. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're proud of that. And maybe they think that's the first step toward a revolution that's gonna make the world better. Their free speech movement 50 years ago ended a campus ban on political organizing during the civil rights and anti-war movements. Students won after months of nonviolent tactics, including marches, sit-ins, and a mass arrest inside the university's administration building. We've finally gotten into a position where we have to consider being responsible because, you know, now, we have the freedom within which to be responsible. I can't tell you how many times we were assaulted, and we didn't fight back. I think we were very um, dedicated to nonviolence at that point. It was a tactic. 
that we felt was was important to keep focused on the issue and not on the violence. I've we had Antifa guys tell me that if you walk around with a swastika band on in America, you should get punched in the face. Look, well, with those ultimate ultimate beliefs anymore. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, How I'm old not are they? No are they argument. two? They must have gone to kindergarten with the president. <laughs> <laughs> That's why nonviolence is important. You don't want to play into their provo provocation. I cannot cousin their belief in violence as a useful response to violence. And I see it as uh, walking right into a very useful resolution to our social conflicts, which is civil war. Now the right wing has taken up the free speech movement's legacy, and the debate has taken a bizarre turn. Is there a fight in the street to be waged against them? And if so, how should it be waged? There are ways, and we should respond. But punching people in the face or, or uh, advocating censorship or the abolition of free speech is a very dangerous road to begin to walk down. The speech is repugnant, but once the left starts arguing for censorship and the abolition of free speech, which the state is only ultimately too happy to embrace, it's always the left that pays. White supremacy is violence. In pretty much every state, people have self-organized and said, like, we don't stand for this, and we're not gonna ask politely to have an institution disinvite them. We're not gonna ask for institutional authority at all. We're going to turn up with our bodies and say, not in my space. <laughs> That's what protesters did last August to oppose a major gathering of hate groups in Charlottesville, Virginia. It ended tragically when a neo-Nazi allegedly murdered 32-year-old Heather Heyer. I did not anticipate someone driving a car into a crowd. I did not anticipate the police standing down. And I did not anticipate Antifa protecting us. Reverend Sekou came to march alongside clergy in Charlottesville that day. They formed a line to block white supremacists from gathering in a park. Sekou brought nonviolent tactics that have been a hallmark of the Black Lives Matter movement. These tactical differences have led to tensions with Antifa in the streets during protests against police brutality. Ferguson, the black bloc showed up. And you know, they were ready to bust some heads. And I walked over to him, I was like, look, I need y'all to stand down. Because if you clown, our asses are the ones that are going to get beat. But in Charlottesville, Antifa used force to defend clergy from attacks by neo-Nazis. Would have been crushed if it was not for Antifa. So they saved my life. And so for me, I saw the gospel embodied in some kids dressed in black and red who came to me and said, Reverend, I will give my life for you. And so somewhere I read, what, there is no greater love than to lay your life down for a friend. The act of violence that killed Heather Heyer fractured an ascendant white supremacist movement, despite attempts by President Trump to spread the blame. I think there's blame on both sides. You look at, you look at both sides, I think there's blame on both sides. No white supremacy, no neo-Nazis. Back on the West Coast, opposition to right-wing groups like Joey Gibson's intensified. In response, Gibson denounced neo-Nazis from the stage of a rally in Seattle. So the day after Charlottesville, we had a rally, thousands of people just wanted to kill us. Like, they were mad. They were like, they looked at me like I was Charlottesville. It was bad, it was bad for a little bit there. I don't see a white supremacist problem on the West Coast, um, but, Tell that to the thousands of protesters that show up and stuff. But in Portland, Rose City Antifa does see a white supremacy problem. They found it repeatedly at Gibson's rallies. These researchers use a tactic called doxing to publicize the personal details of their adversaries. Joey Gibson, bigot enabler. Rose City Antifa found out where Gibson worked and encouraged people to contact his employer. We thought it best to attempt to disrupt his income, which would maybe keep him a little bit too busy to continue organizing at such a rate. Days after the doxing campaign began, Gibson left his job. 
when you have um, people at your rallies who are organizing uh, explicitly for uh, white nationalist violence or to try and build an ethno state, um, those are threats of violence. That's something that needs to be addressed. Rose City Antifa targeted Gibson after scanning the crowd at his March for Free speech in April. There, they found two notorious white supremacists. We see here uh, Jake Ott was photographed uh, shaking hands with Jeremy Christian immediately after Jeremy Christian was throwing a fascist Roman salute, uh, which is obviously well associated with the Nazis. Weeks after this protest, Jeremy Christian was arrested and charged with aggravated murder and hate crimes after allegedly stabbing three people on a Portland train. Death to the enemies of America. Leave this country if you hate our freedom. Death to Antifa. Last summer, Antifa found this interview with Jake Van Ott, an organizer for a group called Identity Europa. Identity Europa is would be understood as what it is, as a hate group, and would be shut down by the community if they tried to hold their own rallies. What they do instead is attend other right-wing rallies and then try to recruit people over to their more explicitly white nationalist and neo-Nazi ideology. We doxed him and provided really, really ugly receipts of his uh, neo-Nazi activity and neo-Nazi beliefs from posts that he had made on social media. Um, he subsequently dropped out of organizing in uh, Identity Europa. Gibson told us he's repeatedly denounced Van Ott including on a day in August when he took this photo at one of his rallies. That's Van Ott, standing right behind him. Gibson is still in the streets, but his turnout tonight is smaller. Antifa is following close behind him, doubling the crowd. We're not gonna allow Portland to run Oregon. We're not gonna allow Seattle to run Washington. These battles for the streets are not enough for Gibson. is gonna be a great year for In February, he announced a run for U.S. Senate. This year. The hatred, the evil that you feel in your hearts, you don't have to be that way. While Gibson seeks a larger stage, Antifa faces questions over its own political future. We have to build a movement that appeals to at least some of those centers of power if we're gonna bring the corporate state down. Which means that, that number one, it has to be nonviolent. And number two, it has to have a vision and a moral force. I don't see them as politically mature in any way. So what else is Antifa? And what sort of movement do they want to build? Somewhere around here. There's a pool of blood up here, um, or a shot. Since his shooting, Hex has been trying to answer that question, searching for a different form of justice in his case. Five days after being shot, Hex gave a statement to police. He told them he did not want his attacker to be prosecuted. January the 25th, 2017. I'm with um, a victim, Josh, can you say your full name? Hi, uh, spell your last uh, name. Joshua Phelan Dukes. This is audio from his conversation with the detective. Um, things have been really, really blurry. I'm still on a lot of medication. The thing that I want isn't really a prosecution. I don't want to participate in a system that, that punishes people. To Hex, the systems of policing and mass incarceration are also forms of fascism. You know, the you know, prison population is, is already pretty big. And, uh, you know, putting, putting more people into cages doesn't really seem to be helping a lot. He sent this letter to the Hoquanas through his attorney. My client believes a restorative justice-informed community response to Friday's violence is the ethical and effective path forward. My client wishes to express his empathy for the person who shot him. Hex says he won't testify at the trial of his attackers. Instead, he prefers a resolution with the Hoquanas outside of court. I've seen my friends attacked like repeatedly again and again. It's really, really hard to maintain like, hey, let's de-escalate, right? Because like this system of violence like pushes people to escalate. May I touch you? May I touch your body? Okay, can, can I see you throw your arms up? 
I'm going to keep trying to like do my thing. I kind of just hope that, that people are able to build the world that we want to see, you know, work towards the world that we want to see, and, and do that with compassion, not only, not only for other people, but for ourselves.